Hello everyone, welcome back to the Aspen Tech channel and in our lecture series on the topic of chemical reaction engineering, we are bringing the lecture number 6 for our valuable viewers. So starting from the previous lecture and at the end of the previous lecture, we have sized the CSTR, we have calculated its volume which came out to be 6.4 cubic meter or 6400 cubic decimeter. Today we will size a PFR and we will see how we can calculate the volume of a PFR. So using the same conditions of x minus ra 1 over minus ra fa naught 0.4 and fa naught over minus ra for different conversions. Now the volume of PFR is fa naught integral 0 to x dx over minus ra or we can say it as volume is equal to 0 to x integral fa naught over minus ra into dx. Now we know the value of fa naught over minus ra and we know the value of x. So what we need to do to solve this integral, there are different techniques available, but today we will be using the 5 point quadratic formula to solve this. Now what does 5 point quadratic formula say? That for x0 to x4, for a function x to dx, that is equal to h over 3 f0 plus 4 f1 plus 2 f2 plus 4 f3 plus f4, while h is equal to upper limit minus lower limit divided by 4. So let's assume that we have to find at point 8. It means that we need 5 points in the system. Now you see f of x represents f a naught over minus r a. So it means f naught will be f a naught over minus r a at x is equal to 0. f1 will be f a naught over minus r a at x is equal to. So how you can find it out? Similarly f of f a naught over minus r a at point 2 f a naught over minus r a at point 3 and f a naught over minus r a at point 4 which is your now this f4 and f naught corresponds to the starting and ending point like f naught is the lower limit which corresponds to that x naught which in your case is 0 while f4 corresponds to this x4 which is in your case is 0.8 so now we need to find out first the value of h x4 minus x naught 0 0.8 minus 0 divided by 4 that will be 0.2 it means that each interval will be of 0 0.2. What does that mean? That this f naught means f a naught over minus r a at x is equal to 0. 4 times f1 means f a naught over minus r a at x is equal to 0 0.2. Then 2 times f2, what does that f2 means? f a naught over minus r a at x is equal to 0 0.4. Now this 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0, it means there is a step size of 0 0.2 in the system which is dictated by the value of h. Then 4 into f a naught over minus r a at x is equal to 0.6 and finally the final value f a naught over minus r a at x is equal to 0.8 and as I have said earlier that this f4 corresponds to this x4 the upper limit and this f naught corresponds to the lower limit which is x naught. Now we know the value of f a naught over minus r a at x is equal to 0 that is 0.89 4 times f a naught over minus r a at x is equal to 0.2 that is 1.33 2 times f a naught over minus r a at x is equal to 0 0.4 that is 2.05 into 2, 4 into 3.54 and finally the 8 and the value of h is 0 0.2. So accordingly we get volume is equal to 2165 cubic decimeter or 2.165 cubic meter. So we have solved it but now we will see how we can solve it on excel as well. So let's quickly move to excel and solve it over there. So now moving to excel sheet. And we can see this one was for the CSTR calculation. We were given the value of x. We were given the value of minus r a. First, we had calculated 1 over minus r a by dividing 1 divided by 0.45 and up to so on for all values. Then multiplying all these with f a naught. And finally, the formula is f a naught x over minus r a. So we had known f a naught over minus r a. We know the x. This was simple algebraic equation. So we have simply multiplied with c2 with c5. And we got the answer of volume at each point and for 80% conversion 6.4 cubic meter or 6400 cubic decimeter volume was required. But now moving on to PFR and using the same values, what we need to do, there are total of 5 terms. So we will say it as first term is F0. So what is this F0? F A0 over minus R A at x is equal to 0. Second term is F1 f1 means f a naught over minus r a at x is equal to 0 0.2 and that value is 1.33. The third term in the system 
what is the third term f2 which is fn out over minus ra at x is equal to 0.4 so that is equal to 2.05 what is the fourth term in the system fourth term is f3 which is fn out over minus ra at x is equal to 0.6 so that is equal to 3.54 and finally the final value f4 at x is equal to 0.8 so what we need to do now the h what is this value of h this one 0.8 minus 0 divided by 4 so h is equal to 0.2 so now how we can calculate volume so v is equal to 0.2 divided by 3 what is this simply f0 plus 4 times f1 which is this one 2 times third term 4 times fourth term and finally this fifth term so we can see that this value has come out and this is 2.166 or 165 cubic meter or taking it to cubic decimeter but multiplying with 1000 so we get 2165.6 or 2166 cubic decimeter volume for PFR so we can say that for the same conversion for 80 percent conversion the CSA volume volume was 6.4 cubic meter but for the PFR it is 2166 cubic meter so for the isothermal system we can safely say that the PFR is the best choice and we have already seen that as well if you see the graph over here that it represents the shadowed area over here while it is just area under the curve it means that for the isothermal system apparently and you have seen as well that PFR is a good choice as compared to the CSTR. So this is our example number 2.3 that compares CSTR and PFR volume. CSTR V is equal to FA0 X over minus RA which gave an answer of 6.4 cubic meter while that of PFR which gave an answer of 2.165 cubic meter. So obviously the PFR is the recommended one and as you can see over here that this area represents a complete area if i show you over here that this complete region represents the volume of cstr while that of the area under the curve represents the region of pfr so this area is the extra area which has come in case of cstr which obviously corresponds to the higher cost for the cstr so for the isothermal systems we can say that cstr is least applicable while that of PFR but what happens if we move or if we change our system and move to the adiabatic system now you can see that for the isothermal system it was continuously increasing trend but for the adiabatic system you can see that first it has decreased and then it has increased now what is the reason behind it the reason is that for the exothermic reactions that are not carried out isothermally the rate usually increases at the start of the reaction so with the increase in this rate obviously this overall value will decrease f0 over minus ra will decrease and accordingly you can say that this value is going down because the reaction temperature increases however as the reaction proceeds the rate eventually decreases as the conversion increases as the reactants are consumed so with the initially the rate increases this value will decrease and after some time the rate decreases because the reactants are consumed in the system so obviously this value will increase so we can see these two competing effects and that give the bowed curve as you can see for the adiabatic system so we will solve further examples related to adiabatic in our upcoming lecture i hope you have enjoyed this lecture and if you have any feedback suggestion please give in the comments box and that's it from this lecture thank you so much Please do watch, like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. Till then it's goodbye. Stay tuned for more exciting videos.